All right, hello everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. Uh, today our topic is the proof of Allah existence. Um, you know, the Muslims, they have tons of articles speaking about the existence of God. Now for me as a Christian, I do not need somebody to prove to me the existence of God because I believe in God. The question is, is Allah really exist? And today we are going to do a little study together and I will open my Skype so in case there is a Muslim he would like to call us and to be part of the conversation he will be more than welcome. Uh, actually my Skype is open any Muslim can call when he wish. Uh, yesterday we said that we will give some time for the Christians to ask questions about Islam so uh, you know if the question can be asked in the text uh, feel free to ask me in the chat and if you cannot explain it in the text then you can call me when we say please you can call uh, people asking where is my video yesterday well you know as, as I said I, I will not keep that video because it's not meant really to keep it same time uh, any video you look for I have it in the past a few days just search for the same title you will find it in mirror channels there's many people download my videos immediately and they load them in their channels so my video is still there <clears throat> now uh, this article written by Nagahamana Ahmad Sharzi look like Pakistani or something like that or maybe even a Persian in case of faith, there is no logical or scientific fact to be proven. You either believe or you don't. The whole purpose of faith is to be that strong in your uh, uh, conviction that you would need or you would not need logic or science. Now, the funny is they are making an article to say, uh, the proof that Allah is exist and then right away they say to you there's no proof I mean that's very really smart the article name is the proof that Allah is exist and the article is start by saying well there is no proof astonishing There is many instances in the Quran that talk about how God created the world, universe, etc. Well, the same verses in the Quran is enough to prove to us that Allah does not exist. And look what they say. And there are enough there is to make understanding that the man born in the 14th centuries would not have access these facts. So the Muslim they claim that the Quran contain uh, scientific knowledge which there is no way somebody who is exist uh, in a certain time he will know them because at that time nobody knows. And then down they start saying to you things which is very funny and have nothing to do with Islam and I don't know, know what this have to do with Islam. I remember sitting in the, my biology class as an, an uh, uh, undergrad, and I am listening to the professor explain how the cell exactly exists. The cell wall is made up of double bio lipid layer, layers, co consisting of uh, molecule that has okay, and and what does have to do with Islam? Let us see. As although this is itself was not amazing enough, the walls have gates and the channels to operate, open, close, etc. Okay, and I particularly 
like Zach and Nike. I mean, what what does this have to do with those guys trying to prove to all to us that Allah is exist? And here he is trying to us how the organ inside the human being they function, and now he's saying, Isn't it God amazing? Well, which God? Which God? Your God? Your God, he says, the women have a sperm coming from their ribs. And that's not amazing. This is amusing. Your God, he says, that women, uh, uh, if they come first, the baby will be a female. If a man comes first, the baby will be a male. Your God, he said many stupid things. It cannot be from, it cannot be from God. And right away they insert here Zakanaik, like the proof of Allah is Zakanaik now. I particularly like Zakanaik, he talks in Lehman terms and he used good examples to uh, Zakanaik, he do that, the proving the existence of Allah to an atheist. I guess maybe this is a video. Logical to accept of God. You see, I was looking for somebody when I tried to prove to me that Allah is exist, not God is exist. We know that God is exist. But look like the Muslims, they cannot prove to us that their God is exist. So they try to play the game that uh, uh, God is exist, but this is not the question. Is Allah exist? All those talk here. Is garbage gibberish and mean nothing and now we have an open challenge for any Muslim would like to call us and prove to us that Allah is exist anyone no Yeshua is not a Jew he is the God of the Jew how you can, how you think that the Messiah the Messiah is a Jew Let me explain to you from the words of the Messiah. He is not a Palestinian. He is not a Jew. He is not from this earth. Isn't it Jesus says, I am from above? I mean, how you people, you claim to be Christian, but you do not know what the Bible says. If Jesus says, I am from above, my kingdom is not here. I am from above. So how you say he is a Jew? And how he can be a Jew? He is the king of the Jew. He is the God of the Jew. You guys are being funny. You are insulting Jesus. Have you ever heard, heard of a God? He is a Jew. Our God is a Jew. He is the God of the Jew. People, they are silly. I mean, why, why, why people do not want to use their brain? Do we have a problem to use our brain? Isn't it Jesus said to the Jews, who, what do you say of the Christ? They said he is a son of David. He said to them, if, well, if he is a son of David, then how David call him God? Are we following? Are we following people? No, he is offspring by birth, but he is not from the offspring of anyone. You see, Jesus just answered you, uh, Nicole. Jesus answered you. He said to the Jews, well, if he is the son of David, then how David call him God? This is not my interpretation. This is a debate between the rabbis and the Messiah. Well, if he is the Jews, they said he is son of David. So by birth, yes, he is by birth from, 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 from. But all of us, we knew that he is not of anyone. Before Abraham, I am. His birth had nothing to do with his existence. Are we following? He exists before Abraham, before Israel, before David, before all of those. No, 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 he is not just more the son of David. He is not. He, you see, by birth, he is a son of David. In the same time, he is not. The Bible is very clear. I am from above. Before Abraham, I am. Who is David? How he is exist before David, and then you say he is a son of David. By birth, he is from Mary, and supposedly he have a parents, Mary and Joseph. So by birth, yes, he is from David, because the, the lineage of... of uh, uh, of, of the blood of Mary goes all the way to David, but not him. 
for his existence have nothing to do with his birth all right you see here Jesus when he said to the uh, to the to the Jews what do you say of the Messiah any Jew anyone will be so proud to say son of David I mean son of David for the Jew is the biggest honor all right to say the son of David is the biggest honor ever for any Jew this is why they they say he is the Christ is from David it's a, like big honor I mean uh, this is not Jesus he did not say I agree with you he said if will if he is if he is then how then David call him my Lord Jehovah Are you following? So don't insult the Messiah by making him equal to us. He is not. Or making him equal to David. He is not. David, he called him God, Lord. I hope I answer you. If you are not convinced, this is your choice. All right? But for sure, that is not really accurate to say literally he is a son of david he is by birth yes but he is not from you see is is jesus a son of any sexual relationship if he is then he will be absolutely he will be considered from 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 so when the bible says that uh, he's born of Mary, the, the daughter of etc., daughter of etc. This is by lineage. This is what the Jews to to be consistent about who is he, where he is born, where he is, you know, like what his family. This is what the Jews do. But literally, he is the son of no man. Right. Now we go back to our topic. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us and prove to us that Allah is exist? Anyone? Who is a Muslim would like to call us and show us that Allah is exist? Until now, I see no Muslim he volunteer even an article to prove to us Allah is exist. And when I search for the Allah to be exist, I find that Allah no way can be exist, and the proof all of it can come from their books. Their books prove to us that Allah is. Uh, in English, they say the word puppet. It sounds insulting, but it is. Muhammad, he used that name to accomplish things he want. So nobody dare to disobey him. Allah is not exist. Allah is a pagan God, exists before Islam and after Islam. The same as the Kaaba, the same as the black stone. You know, what kind of God he sent a black stone to be kissed hmm? we have a God Muslims they call him Allah which they don't even know where this name is coming from they don't even know even know what the name mean for this is a foreign word they stole it from somebody else as usual This God, he said, I'm going to build a house. And we will make a roof for it. Actually, the, the Muslims, they made a roof later. The Kaaba was for uh, without roof for a long time. But when the other tribes, they throw, uh, started throwing garbage inside the Kaaba to prove to the, there's many Kaaba, you know, Kaaba, there was 26 to 27 Kaaba in the Arabian Peninsula. And every tribe, they have a Kaaba for them. 
and it's a competition it's like my mall your mall it's a it's a marketplace so what they do at night they come and they throw garbage over the wall of the Kaaba which have no roof and then when the believers come second day they find garbage and then they say oh well if this Kaaba have God who protected how he how he allowed the garbage to get in and then they decide to make a roof for it All right, and then this God, he told his followers, "You have to bow down around this Kaaba from every direction of the earth." Which additional proof that Allah cannot be exist, because how somebody live in. Uh, in Australia he can face the Kappa direction or Indonesia or America or even Europe that can be possible if you are like not far really from Mecca you know that's possible but the the farther you go the earth is not flat and the Quran is very consistent of teaching that the Kaaba oh sorry the earth is a flat And that is additional proof that Allah cannot be God. The God who do not know how the earth is shaped. You see, the Muslim, they lie. They say in the Bible, it says that the earth is flat. That's a big fat lie. Why? They say the Bible says the four corners of the earth. This is a term of speech we used until now. When we say south and north, this does not even exist. This is a map. We decide. We call this north. We call this south. It's not exist. not real. The same as four corners of the earth. This is a figure of speech about directions. The Bible says that the earth is like a globe. And you can go right now and you can read the verses from the Bible. And the Bible says that the earth is hanged on nothing. While the Quran speak that the sky is lifted by columns which you cannot see all right so the proof that allah does not exist is very easy to accomplish this is a man his name is Muhammad fabricating stories claiming that this is coming from his God his name is Allah which is the God of the Arab before him which is the God of the Middle East and before him he is the moon God and we explain many times that Allah is not even the accurate name of this God the accurate name is the same as the following Al. And then la El is an ancient word mean God. La is the name of the God. So God la. As simple as that. The Muslim they try to say this is a word diverted from El Ilah. You see. Uh, it might sound very close, but if you go and uh, uh, read carefully, you will see they are nothing to do with each other. El Ilah is just a word meaning God. Al La is a name. It's a word already have the word God, which is in the front of it, which is Al. You know what I mean? If the word Allah was a word meaning God, which means it's not a name, we can take that into consideration. But the word Al by itself is a God. So what? God, God? <laughs> you know what I mean? If the word Al is a word meaning God, then that means that the word here is God, God. That's stupid. So Allah is the god la and you can go right now and search for la and you will find that this is the moon god in the kaaba 
there's two corners which is very important one of them have the black stone there and the other corner have or has different color of stones they are kind of a brownish they are a bunch of stones not one stone and this corner is called the Yemeni corner the Yemeni corner why is called Yemeni corner the Muslim they say it's facing Yemen okay facing Yemen why it's facing Yemen why the Yemeni corner facing Yemen what does that mean the fact there's stones in that corner is brought from the temple of Makkah Makkah in the old language if you remember the Muslim they say to us that the Quran was sent down in seven letters this is Makkah in Arabic And this is Mecca. What the difference between them? This letter in the middle. But for those who understand languages, they will learn that for the people of Yemen, they don't say the letter Ka. The, uh, sorry, for, for the for the people of Quraysh. They they pronounce the letter Qa as Ka in such a, in such places like in this case here Mecca. So or what they do they switch the letter. So Mecca became Mecca. It's exactly the same word. And actually this is existent and now in the Middle East, where you know you will find like uh, as an example in Egypt. The letter J, they don't say J, they say uh, uh, Gorg, go, go, Gorg. You say George, you say Gorg. <laughs> or uh, uh, Geet, which means Jeet or Jit. The letter J became G. So, Mecca was a name, actually, copy from Al Makkah. Al Makkah, you can search for it right now in Google, you will find. That al Makkah is a temple of the moon god. Let me try to search for it so we can show it to you in the screen. This is al Makkah temple. Do you see it? Al Mecca temple, and there is uh, tens of articles about it. And Al Mecca table, the temple is built. Uh, some they say by the Ethiopian, etc. But uh, I believe that this temple is built ac according to the Sabian. It's built by them. The Sabian they claim that they are the one who built Al Mecca temple and that is possible because Sabian as I believe spread all over the Middle East if we go to read about this al Makkah temple uh, this is a book let us see if we can find an article all right Now, you know, for me, I don't believe in everything written here and there, but you know, I mean, there is always a route for this. And Al Makkah, Al Makkah is a temple which is the temple of the moon god. Do you see it? The moon temple. All right, so uh, the, 
Mecca was an what they call it a counterfeit of Al Makkah. They brought and let me search again for the Yemeni corner because we forgot to show you the Yemeni corner. Yemeni. All right. We find we found some images that will be enough. This is the Yemeni corner of the Kaaba. You notice with me here that there is those rocks that don't match. Do we notice that? They are like is as somebody tried to push them here and there, you know, like they, they don't even look the same as color. As the rest of the Kaaba, the Kaaba, most of it is a black, like a, a, a volcanic uh, stones. So you will notice that those stones. According to Muhammad, they are holy stones. And the one who touched them, they erase his sin. Now, we understand that the Muslim, they try to say to us that Islam is not a pagan cult. And they fight badly for that. I mean, they want to try to prove to you that there is no way we are pagan and there is no way we are a cult. But if we ask the Muslims, why if we touch those stones and the black stone the two corners that will erase our sin this image here is showing you how even the yemeni corner stones don't match with the rich with the rest of the stones do you notice here do you notice like it, it's obviously somebody inserted them there Is it is it a clear guys for you? It's like somebody he inserted those uh, stones. They don't they don't match with the rest. They are they don't belong there. Why? You see, until now there is a, a Christian churches. They build a church in the top of uh, a tomb or a, a remain of a of a saint. It's a very close idea. The Arab. In Mecca, they wanted to give a reason for people to switch, not to go all the way to Mecca. Why you want to go to to, to Al Makka, the temple in Yemen, to touch those stones? We will bring some of them to here, and we will put them for you here. And if you touch them, it erase your sin. So why you want to go all the way to Las Vegas if we can bring Las Vegas to you? Do you, do you understand? Now, how we can prove that this is the scenario? Look what Muhammad he said. Let me find you the hadith. And I changed the Muslim to say I'm lying. I mean, uh, here we go. You know, the Muslim, whatever you say to them, they will say you're a liar. If we go in the hadith, <clears throat> you will see Muhammad saying,
okay we are getting close to find it you see here you see this hadith here it says that the prophet ibn abbas he said i never saw the prophet touch places in his hand in any part of the kaaba except the two corners the black stone and the yemeni corner do you see it which is which is obviously a proof of a belief that there is something holy about those two corners look how many hadith you see it all of those speaking of the same now there is a different hadith I'm trying to find it for you Muhammad saying that whoever touched those two corners Allah erase his sin this is a very clear pagan cult all those so the Muslim they cannot say to us this is weak I mean this is look how many story reported he touched them and he go around them look how many now let's find the hadith about erasing the sin Here we go. Abu Abdul Rahman. Oh, Abdul. A guy. He said. A companion said to the man. He said, "Oh, Abu Abdul Rahman. Why do I only see you touching these two corners?" He said, "I heard the messenger of Allah saying, touching them erases sin.' Do you see it? Touching them." Is erasing sin. This is Sunan and Nisa'i hadith number 2919. So Muhammad taught his followers if you touch stones, your sin is erased. And look, he is not saying only the black stone. Do you notice? He did not say only the black stone. He says, if you touch the black stone and the Yemeni corner, touching them, erase. The sin, and that explains why in the in the in the hadith we showed you before just a second ago, Muhammad touching those two corners, correct? Did you do you remember just two minutes ago we showed you that Muhammad never go around the Kaaba without touching those two corners? Now he explained why. Because touching them erases your sin. If we ask the Muslims why, if there is any Muslim. He have an answer please let me know why if we touch those stones they are going to erase our sin any Muslim what kind of belief the belief is if, if Islam is not a pagan cult what kind of a belief the one teaching me if you touch stones two corners who has stones one is called the black stone in the shape of a woman vagina and it was a woman vagina and we show you the reference before that the Arab they used to go and circulate around the Kaaba and women during the time of their period they used to touch their vagina when they have it their period and their hand is full of blood and they place it inside the black stone and this is why Muhammad he said that the black stone was white like milk but the sin of mankind made it black which means Muhammad he's claimed that being a black is a sin it's a penalty according to Muhammad racism and they believe that women she is not be able to have or to bear a child because simply she commits sin so by touching her vagina and touching and, and then getting the blood from there and placing her hand inside the black stone the black stone will 
observe the sin and will clear the woman from her sin and she will be able to bear a, a, a child all of this is a pure paganism nothing less nothing more and we challenge any Muslim to say it's not true Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Any Abdul? Let us see this Abdul. He's saying, Call me. I don't know if he's on there. Look like he is not. If you are a Muslim and you have an answer, please feel free. This is a very clear proof that Islam is nothing but a stupid cult, believing in paganism and stones, holy stones. Holy stones. You do not need to be genius to, be, to 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 find out and to figure out that somebody believe in holy stones. He must be a pagan person, a stone worshiper. You see, Muhammad did not say the one who prayed to Allah, the one he says whoever touched them it erased his sin. I mean, how in the world can the this can be? anything except paganism and the same time we showed you how Muhammad never perform circulation around the Kaaba without touching those two corners obviously because he is teaching the Muslims that this is how you can you know uh, get your sin to be erased and that will increase the number of people who they are coming to circulate around the Kaaba because every one of us want his sin to be erased so what we do we go around the Kaaba and we touch the, the black stone and the Yemeni corner now do we have any Muslim he have something to say Anyone? No Muslims? Can you give me a reference that Muhammad, you drank wine? Sure, no problem, but let us finish this one first. Let us not to jump from topic to topic. Who is a Muslim would like to give us a call and show us that Muhammad is not a pagan person and Islam have nothing to do with paganism and Allah is exist. Anyone? Do you notice the disability? Do you notice the disbelief? Where is the aggressive Muslims who want to show us that we are wrong? Very interesting paganism. And the funny, the Muslims, they call everyone else a pagan. In fact, they are the pagan. They are the one who believe in stones. Actually, even Muhammad, he said in different hadith that in the judgment day, the stone is going to have eyes and ears and tongue. And going to speak. Allah will talk to the black stone. And the black stone is going to bear witness for every Muslim who touch it or kiss it. 
if this is not paganism, what is paganism? Do we have any Abdul? When the hadith says that the black stone is the hand of Allah on the earth, is that a paganism or not? How a black stone is the right hand of Allah on earth? And whoever shake hand with it or kiss it as if he shake the hand or kiss the hand of Allah. Are we making things up, Abdul? You know, there is something interesting. I don't know. I don't understand what uh, how to explain. Sometimes I search for things to show you, and then guess what I get? I get the reference in the CIA government website. I mean, that's interesting. I'm not joking. Look. Central Intelligence Agency, U.S., WWW, CIA government library. The CIA, they knew everything about the scam of Muhammad. And they have the reference in the front of us. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm searching for reference and not only that they are quoting they are quoting scholars and I mean they have they have really a, a good reference nice work CIA <laughs> oh boy they should protect CP I do not need any protection I, I am protected by my Lord Nobody can touch me unless unless it's my time to you know you know for 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 you. I mean, who can? If you think somebody can really protect you, you are mistaken. And if you seek protection of a man, he himself needs protection. Doesn't matter how strong he is, or everybody will die. How dead people can protect dead people? However. Even after death, my friend, you are going to accomplish a great mission. You see, when the Muslims, they went so crazy against Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie, his book, nobody really read it. I mean, his book is not even a big deal. But overnight, the stupid Abdul, they made Salman Rushdie the most famous man in the top of the earth. Suddenly, people woke up in the morning and they find 20 million Iranian Shia screaming death to Salman Rushdie. Everybody starts saying, who is this guy Salman Rushdie? Fatwa to kill him, reward to kill him, you know. This guy, he became the most famous person, figure in this earth overnight. By a small, tiny book, says nothing inside it reading, nothing serious. So I hope, you know, actually, I wish that uh, the, the, uh, the leader of ISIS, he will take my book and he will say, this guy should be killed. That will be my day. But the idiot is not doing it. What a shame, you know. Because if he go and he says that, do you know how many subscribers I will have the second day? Just guess. How many people they will buy and, re and read my books? Just guess. This is the biggest help. And even if they kill you, still people will, will go and say, what is that? Why does guy get killed? Still is going to work for my benefit. Now, do we have any Abdul here? Anyone?
who is a Muslim want to explain to us the paganism of Islam are we going to stuck here no Muslim want to call us you Muslims are you serious I'm really disappointed I thought the Muslim now they will say I want to call you I want to show you you are wrong and look at them this ability of a god of a flat earth and a black stone and a Yemeni corner which is nothing but a bunch of stones been taken from the temple of al Makkah, as we showed you which is the moon god temple now by the way uh, there is many naive people they say to you as an example there's a guy his name is james white dr james white this guy is extremely naive he have no idea what islam is about don't ever listen to him and learn islam from him He said, uh, someone he asked him, well, do is is the Allah the moon God? Uh, this guy, he said, well, no, no way, because the Quran says don't worship the moon and don't worship the sun. But who said that the moon God is worshiping the moon itself? The moon God is the God of the moon. You need to know what, what that religion is before we talk about it. If I say uh, uh, the, the TV God does not mean the TV is the God there's a moon God and there's a Sun God they have six and they have three daughters how you can explain to me the three daughters of Allah let us read together You go in the Quran, you will find in chapter 53, verse number 19, the following. And here there's additional proof of what I said to you just in the beginning. If you remember, I said to you the name of Allah contained two words. You remember? The name of Allah contained two words. Al. You remember? Al. And then and this is exactly what's happening here and this is the Muslim translation al lat do you see it al lat al uzzah who is the lat and who is the uzzah those are goddess they are goddess the three daughters of Allah and Manat. Manat present death. This is why it does not have a L before it. So Allah have three daughters, Al Lat, Al Uzza, and Manat, and they are females. And Allah complaining why you are giving him females and you take for yourself males, which obviously clear. Evident that the one is talking here is somebody he's an Arab He have the mentality of an Arab man who he liked to have male sons not females And he is saying to them to the Arab what you give to Allah the females and for you the males Which is a very silly stupid statement. There is no way God he will speak in such a way. I Mean your objection is about for you. They give you the female. This is the objection <laughs> I mean this is funny and not only that this is a proof you see the Muslim they say to you that Islam gave women her right before Islam women don't have right but as you see the Arab they even worship females before Islam how the Arab before Islam discriminate females but yet they are their goddess do we understand guys there's no way that I don't respect females and then I make my God a female now for those who say that Allah is not a moon God you tell us the story what is behind that Allah have three daughters what he have he have he lay eggs why, why the Arab they come to the conclusion that Allah or the belief that Allah have three daughters 
Do, do you understand me guys? Obviously, there's a there's a story behind it. You can go and search, you will find that the moon god Allah he did marry from the sun god, and then he they have three daughters. So when somebody says to you, like James White, no way the Muslim they believe in the moon god. Yes, today, yes, yes, today they don't believe in the moon god, but the, this is the origin of the religion. If you ask a Muslim, he will say to you, no, we don't believe in the moon god. But this is how it is today. But Allah is a name of God, which is the moon god. And the Muslims, as usual, they are the last one to know. And actually, Muslims today are disconnected with Islam. They have no idea what Islam is about. The first books written about Islam is more than 300 years after Muhammad. And until now, the Muslims, the Quran we are reading right now, they don't have a copy of it. They have a recitation of recitation. Recitation. They claim that this recitation of a guy, his name is Hafs, and Hafs exists more than 260 years after Muhammad. And he was accused by Muslim to be a fraud, same as his father, stepfather, who he learned the Quran from him. Do we have any Muslim here? You have anything to say? By the way, we appreciate those who made the donation. Thank you very much for your support. And now I can take a flight and visit the black stone and touch them and that will erase my sin by the help of those who they are helping us. Let me go and search for a ticket because I have a lot of sin I want to erase and I don't know what to do. But finally, now we can fly to the Kaaba, buy a ticket and we are going, I will I will uh, turn on my phone and I will show you myself erasing my sin life. What do you say, Muslims? Brother Sattar, today we have a very a proof that a Christian prince finally is going to convert to Islam. He bought a ticket to go to Mecca. And because he is full of sin, he decided to go to Mecca so he can touch the black stone. And he is going to touch the Yemeni corner. And brother, after the Christian prince, after all what he did, after he touched the stone, immediately his sin is going to be erased. Amazing, brother. This is the miracle of Allah. Hey, brother, hold on, I'm calling Christian prince, brother. Terrain, 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 terrain. A Christian friend? Uh, yes. Uh, this is Dr. Dr. Naik with you. Uh, Dr. Naik, you are calling me? You yourself calling me? What an honor, my brother, to call me. Brother, I'm calling you now because you are sin free. After you touch the black stone, I have no problem to take hand with you. Um, uh, Brother, uh, I have a problem. What did that brother? I, I did not touch the black stone with my hands. You you touch it with what? Um, I, I'm 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 really shy to say to you. I I did it the same exactly as the Arab used to do. What, what do you mean? Um, they use their penis. <laughs> do you know, guys, that the Arab they used to use their penis? The Arab used to use their penis. The female she touched the black stone with her vagina, and then the guy, the male, the husband, he go after her. His turn. And he put his penis in the black stone. I mean, how silly, how stupid this cult is. And actually, this is why <clears throat> some they say, but I cannot really verify, that the origin of the word hajj is not hajj, it's hack. Hack. Like you scrap. You know, so what they do, they do hack to the black stone. Let me type it hack. In English is going to be like this. I would try to resemble it.
because we said to you before I mean the reason for this uh, method the woman she is not able to have babies and now she want to get fertilized the black stone is the is the fertil fertility stone this is why it's made in the shape of a vagina like did you ask yourself why the black stone in that shape what is the secret behind that I mean there is many kinds of shapes we can have for this black stone why the black stone have that shape did you ask yourself there is a reason everything have a reason they did not just come to the shape for from nothing right what is the reason for that stone to look like this you tell me from all the shapes exist we can come with millions of shapes for anything why this shape is the shape of the black stone do we have any muslim wanna give us some enlightening are we making things up and now zero Muslim even try to call me very sensitive topic and Muslims will would love to avoid such a thing This is why, by the way, the Muslims, they love to debate you about the Bible, about Jesus, in order to avoid speaking about their cult, their paganism. And in case you do not know, the black stone is not even exist. What they have there is resembling of the stone. What they have inside the stone is little tiny stones left over of what they claim to be, used to be a black stone. They have eight little tiny pieces and every week they do maintenance for the black stone let me see if i can show you some pictures and by the way this is additional proof that islam is false and i will tell you why Do you see it guys do you see the guy is fixing the black stone with the melting machine do you, do you is, is the picture clear for you or no this is a backstani guy they brought him from Pakistan. he always keep maintaining the walks around the little tiny stones do you see him They have to do regular maintenance for the stone or what is left inside. You see here the steam. You see it's burning, the wax. So what they have, they have a very special kind of wax which will make it impossible for somebody to unblock those little tiny rocks, which is there are eight little tiny ones, and I will show you a clear picture of them. And every week they have to maintain it, otherwise those rocks, people, they can steal them. And now here we need to ask a question if Allah is the one who sent the black stone how come he cannot preserve the black stone and now we have only little tiny rocks and now we need to do maintenance every week for them you know what I mean guys if Allah is the one who sent those stones and they are going to be there until judgment day okay now these stones are gone they became little tiny stones and they're getting smaller and smaller people kissing them people licking them you know every day and in order to preserve them we cover them by wax so people will not really they will see them they will see the stone but they, uh, they think they are touching but in the top there is wax to preserve the stones from being stolen and from being you know uh, 
you know disappear because if you touch a stone every day every day and there's thousands of people touching it every day you can imagine what will happen after 20 years so if this is a holy stone Allah send the stone why Allah need to do maintenance can't Allah preserve the stone is that a good logic guys is that a good question if this is stone sent by Allah why man he need to preserve the stone and now the stone is gone actually there's no stone we need to fix the stone we need to do maintenance to the stone how in the world that can be true The stone of Allah need maintenance. I thought the car of Allah will work forever. It turned to be not true. Even Allah car need maintenance. And this is a very clear additional evidence that the black stone is a lie. I don't know if you can see with me here in this picture let me zoom more maybe we can get closer so you guys can see it I will try to highlight for you the stones just to show you how how, how silly this cult is there's no stones guys do you see the is, is it is it clear from your side let me let me highlight for you where the stones are located and you will see right away there's no stones left little tiny rocks I will make it in white so you can notice with me this is one rock little tiny rock I don't know if you can see it Do you see it and this is one and this is one and this is one you can tell right away that the the, the, the inside is like a, a dirty ugly wax I mean do you see how it looked like the inside you know like a, a, a and you notice that the wax itself is in the color of a dirty blood do you notice with me it's like a clot of a blood and here you notice the rest of the rocks one here one here until now we have like one two three six i think there's two more let us see where maybe this one here it's not really clear and we are that will make them seven i think they are eight so there's no stone there's no black stone there's a little tiny little tiny rock this is the holy stone of allah allah this is what is left of allah stone and now we have to do maintenance for this holy stone of allah which is not even exist I am sure many of you now convert and like, are going to convert to Islam immediately I mean look at this what are you talking about man this is must be the true belief and then you see a poor African or a white man Converting to Islam because they told him Islam is the only way brother Allah is the only God brother Islam is not a pagan religion brother when nothing in Islam is true It is the most stupid cult ever you can imagine and here I am here to challenge anyone Who he can even try to prove to me that Islam is exist as a religion Or Allah is exist as God And Islam is not a pagan cult Carried from the Arab before Islam and the Arab they carried it from the Aramaic before before the Arab Any Abdul You can call me if you are a Christian, if you are a Muslim, I want to speak about this topic. 
or any topic you want if you are a Muslim and you, you, you can prove to us Islam to be exist no problem call us please feel free oh hold on I found here a more clear guys look do you see this see the, the rocks this is more a close shot do you see the rocks this is two rocks here three rocks four rocks let me let me show you do you see them very tiny they are zooming in look and you know they don't even I mean they are not even black and they are they don't even match in the color look at this this one doesn't look like this one this one look like this one and there's one here <laughs> how in the world the human being can believe in such a crazy stuff I mean a human being is really weird you know sometimes we like we insult donkeys we say donkey is stupid like a donkey donkey is a smart a donkey will not kiss a black stone trust me on that you cannot convince a donkey that if he touch a stone he will be his sin will be erased no matter what you do he is a smarter than this here they are preparing the tools so they can fix and maintain the black stone paganism Uh, somebody saying to me philosophically Muhammad could have been the worst person the world has seen on subject basis you may even seen say you don't promote his morality but that does not make Islam false my friend, I don't like stupid talk. Everything we are saying in front of us prove Islam to be false. Because this is kind of morality too. It is morality not to lie and claim that touching stones will erase your sin. In the same time, proving that Muhammad is a pagan person. So don't tell me what is a strong argument, what is not. If this is will not prove to us that Muhammad is a false man because here there is many things involved moral because what is the moral if I touch a stone and that erase my sin what I did exactly I mean this is silly so we can get someone he raped 1,000 child and then he go around the Kaaba and he touches stones and then that erases sin that is against morality number two against justice number three it's a pagan so don't tell me what is right to say what's wrong one of the funny things about some Christians they try always to school you about how to do or to say but they themselves they will not do anything do we have any Muslim would like to call us Don't text me if you are a Christian now, please. Anyone? Now we can show tons of reference about the earth is a flat and scientific errors and the Quran and all the madness and all the stupidity. You name it. Before you call me, you have to ask for permission. Otherwise, I will block you.
Do we have any Abdul? Can Christian friends speak in tongues? Uh, maybe this guy is trying to be funny and silly. Do I have to? Speaking in tongues. Is it necessarily for me to be Christian to speak in tongues? Or you are an idiot? Or you are a certified one? Well, uh, uh, Mr. Pill, I think you are the scam. Are you? Are you a guy who believe in kissing stones will save you from sin? Who is a Muslim would like to call us? I'm waiting for any Abdul who have the courage and the knowledge to call us and tell us how touching stones will erase our sin. Very simple. And I don't like to see people speaking about people in their back and they are using very stupid words. Mr. Pill, you are not welcome here. Even you are attacking this guy Abbas. Do we have any Muslim here? Who is a Muslim would like to call us? As you see, uh, uh, the Muslims obviously they have to agree that this is a cult, and there is no way that somebody believe in touching stones will erase your sin. He can be a prophet or the one so called God. That's not, not true belief. Cannot be true belief. It's stupid. It's silly. It's dummy. It doesn't make sense. And there's no. I mean, what I did exactly to deserve to be my sin to be erased? Just touching a stone? That's it? How Muhammad is a prophet of God and he, he teach such a thing? How someone he claimed that he is a person, you know, so why you why you pray to Allah? You know, live, live six, uh, until you are 70, 80, you know, and before you die, go around the Kaaba, touch the stones, and that's it. Your son is erased, my, my friend. That's so beautiful. And now, you know, this is not the only reason to believe that Islam is false. There's many of reasons. I mean, from the first verse in the Quran to the last verse in the Quran, it's nothing but a joke. And the Muslim, they say to us, this is an amazing book. Look at this. If you go, if you go to the first verse in the Quran, how in the world, Allah, he says, praise be to Allah. You see, you might say to me, well, this is a prayer, my friend. In order to make it a prayer, you have to say, say, pray like this. But Allah Himself, without introduction, saying, In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Okay, what does that mean? Imagine Christian Prince, he opened his program and he says, In the name of Christian Prince. So, who are you? Who is the one who is talking? If Allah is talking, how he say in the name of Allah?
a brother and Tatar, we are going to introduce to you a brother Dakar Naik. Dakar Naik, a brother, can you introduce yourself? In the name of Dakar Naik, and I am from Bangladesh, and actually I'm from India. And actually, let me say in the name of Dakar Naik again and again. And because that, we're going to make Christian Prince upset. But you are Zakir Naik. Why are you saying the name of Zakir Naik? And then Allah, he says, praise be to Allah. I mean, things is getting more interesting. Allah says, praise be to Allah. Do you remember the Abdul Mimi who said that Allah, he pray for, not to? Allah, praise, praise be to Allah. And by the way, it's not really praise, you know, it can be that the word here is Alhamdu, which means thanks to Allah. Allah is thanks in Allah. Hey, Allah, thank you. Who's talking? I'm Allah. I would say thank you to Allah. Allah is Allah is saying thanks to Allah. That makes sense. I mean, who can make a lot of sense? And then Allah, he says, he we worship. The worship. So look what happened here. Muhammad, because he's a false man, he fabricated this prayer, trying to copy the prayer of the Christians. Our the when the Christian they ask Jesus how to pray, he say pray like this. Our Father, right? So Muhammad, he needed a prayer equal to the Christian prayer. Okay, they have a prayer. It's called our Father. What we will do? So he try to make a prayer which is equal, and yet he claim that this is coming from his God, but he forgot to switch. He forgot to say, "Say, pray like this." Same time. If I am a person praying to Allah, how I say in the name of Allah? Guys, just think with me a little bit deep. How I, man, I am as a man, I can say in the name of Allah. In order to say in the name of Allah, I have to be somebody, at least, hired by Allah. Represent Allah. Correct? Like if a soldier he says he come to you and he says in the name of the king he is he is saying what in the name of the authority which is given to me by the king I can do this right? So how you as a Muslim you say in the in the name of Allah? What does that mean? It's a silly. What is the name of Allah? What does that mean? People, are are you following with me or or my idea isn't clear? When I say in the name of Allah, what does that mean? This is stupid. What does that mean? Somebody tell me what does that mean in the name of Allah? What does that mean? Somebody took too much hashish in the name of Allah. What are you going to arrest somebody? Are you going to do something? No. So, what do you mean in the name of Allah? If this is a prayer, how you say in the name of Allah? What does that mean? This is silly. I pray to Allah by saying to him in the name of Allah, I never heard of a madness hashish like this before. <laughs> but you know, the, the problem is people read, but nobody think deeply. I mean, we always read this in the name of Allah, but nobody want to think for a second, okay, how in the world this world even came to existence? This is very silly, very stupid. What do you mean you are saying in the name of Allah? In the name of Allah what? To say in the name of Allah, I have to say something after it, I will do. As an example, in the name of Allah, I will, uh, uh, you know, uh, arrest you. In the name of Allah, I will judge you. In the name of Allah, uh, but in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and then you say, 
Praise be to Allah. That's silly. That's stupid. So you notice here that the first three verses in this chapter, they are useless and they mean nothing. Actually, even the, the 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 fourth one, in the number five, here we go and says this is a prayer. The we worship. So, what the benefit of this in the name of Allah, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, and praise be to Allah, the Lord of the Lord, and the benefit. Didn't you already say the beneficent, beneficent, and the merciful already here? Why you are repeating it twice? I mean, do you have to repeat it after two seconds? Second? Already you said that. Silly, stupid. He's just trying to make something out of nothing. Already we said that here. Why we are saying it here again? I'm oh, sorry, here. In this one. In verse number three. Nothing. There's no meaning. Already I said Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. So as you see, every single statement in this Quran is a joke. Especially if you start reading carefully and analyzing. And then look, show us the straight path. This is not really a clear translation. What a sirat? A sirat is a bridge. Where the Muslims will pass through hell, go into heaven. When they are walking in this bridge, let us let us use some art to explain to you this bridge. This is a bridge. And here we have heaven. We will type the word H. Heaven. People, they start walking in this bridge. And people, they will walk in the top of it, but not all of them, they will be able to walk without their feet coming down from the bridge. So when you go in the bridge, if you have too much sin, supposedly, you will go almost maybe to your neck down. It's like a sandy, a moving a quicksand, they call it quicksand. So your head will be here and then your body will be down and this is the hellfire. A person who have less sin, his, uh, let us say his ass will be in the hellfire from here in the hellfire and then his top of his body is up on the bridge a person who have less sin which means he did jihad and he killed some christians and jews he his feet will be in the top of the heaven bridge and he will not go all of him but his feet will be still in fire this is what a sirat sirat is an idea starting from the persian those who worship the fire. There's a bridge, and during this bridge, people will be burned based on their sin. The Quran says, وَمَا مِنْكُمُ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Not a single of you, but he will enter hell, which is a contradiction for the bridge idea. Every person he will enter hell.
which means not even a single person he will not go there why any Muslim have an idea And by the way, this is not even a choice to accept or not. You will be, you will go to hell, guaranteed. And this is in Quran, it says, and this is a hukman maqdiyya, which means this is a destiny. The Muslim translation here, they say, there's not one of you, but shall approach it. That's a, that's a lie. The real translation is, not one of you, but he shall enter it. That is a fixed ordinance of the Lord. Fixed destiny, fixed fate. Every Muslim will enter hell. And we can show you that actually even from their own funny interpretation for the Quran. <clears throat> as usual. Chapter 19. Verse number 71, as you see. Always, do you see it? Not one of you, but shall come to it, but shall enter hell. Very mad, stupid religion, collection of religions. Muhammad, he was collecting some belief from the Sabia and some from the Christian, some from the Jews, some, 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 and then we have whatever you call it, some. Do we have any Muslim would not say something to us? All Muslims go to hell. Yes, this is what it says. I'm not the one who said that. This is the Quran. And as you see here, this is already decreed by the Lord to you. And this is again additional nail in the coffin of Islam because according to Islam, all is decreed. So going to hell is decreed. It's not, it's not a choice. It's not about you commit sin or not. You, you have to go to hell. So to make it simple, what the Muslim believe, that you go to hell first and then Allah will save some from hell and take them to the gates of heaven. So everybody, or let's say you enter the gates. There is, there is gates. And those gates lead you, even if you want to go to heaven, still you have to go to hell first. So they are gate of heaven in the same time they are gate of hell. So you have to go to hell first and then you will burn as Allah decreed for you. Not based on what who you are. No, Allah decreed. Before he created you, he decreed. Do we have any Muslim? Who is a Muslim is listening? He did not agree with us. Please don't hesitate to tell me you don't agree. I mean, you don't have to agree, but just call us and show us why you don't agree. If we go and take any chapter in the Quran, any chapter, there is one thing always you will find that they are non-consistent and they don't match, they don't make sense, and the story is mixed up. Read and love. Remember in the book, 
Idris. Muslims, who is Idris? We as Arab, we never heard of a name such as this before, Idris. Who is Idris? Who is this guy Idris? Any Muslim have an idea? And we raised him to high station. What does that mean? Is that Elijah? <laughs> Idris? Who is this Idris? Didn't know. A book of madness, stupidity, mystery. I mean, have you ever heard of a God? Suddenly, in the middle of nowhere, look, the verses before have nothing to do with this. Suddenly he says, and remember Idris. Okay, who is Idris? So didn't you say to us first, Idris, who is Idris, where he live? What language he speak? I mean, what's wrong with this religion? How somebody is reading this book now is going to understood who is Idris? How we can understand based in the Quran who is this guy who is Idris? And what do you mean we raised him to a high station? Don't shouldn't you tell us the story from the beginning? Who is Idris? What happened to him? How Allah raised him? Raised him where? What high station? Is that the fifty floor building or this is heaven or what? What happened? No, we do not know. I will give you another simple, a stupid uh, uh, example of in the Quran. If we go right now in the Quran and we type the word Israel, Israel. And then we ask any Muslim, okay, all those verses in the Quran keep saying Israel, 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 Israel. Okay, who is Israel? For the sake of the shin of Allah, who is the Muslim when I tell me who is this guy? His name is Israel. There is nothing. Nowhere in the Quran it says, Who is this guy? Who is his name is Israel? All food was made lawful to the children of Israel. By the way, it, you know, here we go, children of Israel, except. What Israel forbid himself, okay, forbid himself, he's a guy, okay, who is he? Allah have time to tell us that what, what, what kind of falafel Israel he eat? Israel, he like falafel, he like hummus, but Allah will not tell us who is Israel and how his name became Israel. Who is this guy Israel? Who is his father? Where he's coming from? Which country? Which language he speak? Nothing. Or what Allah care that all food was lawful for the children of Israel except what Israel he made unlawful for him. This is the important now. Okay, shouldn't you tell us who is this guy? If you go a few verses down, you will see another pupu. What is the name of Mecca? They say to you, Mecca. Okay, hold on. So what is that here? What is Becca? Who is Becca? Where is Becca coming from? Where, where, where we can find the city of Becca? It turned to be that Mecca is the same as Becca. According to Muslims. According to some historian, Becca is Petra. You know Petra, the stone city. Madness, book of you. You don't know what he's talking about. You don't know what what this guy is talking about.
if you go just a few verses before I can find you a proof that the Christian Prince was in Mecca who want to see the proof that Christian Prince he was in Mecca at that time or in Becca do you want to show you the proof go a few verses look at this Christian Prince is doing his work there or who you believe if you obey the party of those who have received the scriptures you will make you this believer after you believe Muhammad complained that many of those who claim to be Christian Muslims they left Islam because they spoke to Christian Prince how do you disbelieve when it ye into him Allah revelation uh, recited I mean look at look at this debate refute them about why they decide not to believe you say to them how you disbelieve and in Muhammad he received revelation I mean this is an answer debate them about why they decide to leave and they spoke to Christian Prince Christian Prince he got you busted oh you believe observe your duty to Allah with righteousness and right observation and so you do not die and save what is that the Christians obviously they were very painful for Muhammad he they are making Muslims leave Islam in his time and then Muhammad he decided to do more popo showing his racism the day where Allah he make faces white and faces black why Allah want to make people white and black ah the believers are going to be rewarded and all of them they will be so white whiter than a moon and these believers Allah will make them all black do you see it finally I will have a black face so I can find a girlfriend I mean, each time you talk to a girl, you say to her, uh, do you have a boyfriend? She say, are you black? She say, I say, no. She say, uh, uh, take care. So finally, Allah will punish me and he will make me black. I, this is my wish. I want to be black. What's wrong with being black? Why in Islam, if you are a black, you are bad? What do you mean Allah is going to make our faces white and black? And by the way, if you go and read the interpretation, you will see it says clearly that there's a beast his name is a justice I will come with the stick of Moses and the ring of Solomon by the way I have both I have the stick of Moses and the ring of Solomon so if any of you want to change his color come to me I charge you I mean this God Allah is funny he changed the color by a ring of Solomon and stick of Moses somebody saying about I'm just joking guys we are just joking about the racism of Islam I mean who care really if you are black or white hello any Muslim can tell us what's happening Oh, hold on, hold on. Abdullah, Abdullah, Ahmed Abdullah is saying, out of the darkness into the light, dummy. Abdullah, why you are lying, Abdullah? Okay, Abdullah, I challenge you to call me Abdullah, brother, and you show me that this is what the Quran meant. What do you think, guys? Can Abdullah prove what he posts for us in the text, or he is lying to us? Abdullah, I offer you, my friend, to call me and to show me that what you said is really what the Quran meant and not only that I challenge you that I will show you that this is about physically transforming the color of the skin guys do you think Abdullah he have the courage to call me and get me busted what do you say Abdullah
Abdullah, you have a golden opportunity. There is almost 900 people watching. Call right now and show everybody that Christian Prince is not telling the truth. Would you? Hello? The second I start talking to the Muslims, they play dead, you know. Well, you call me, you don't call me, I'm going to show the reference. What do you think, guys? The story of Ajassasa is mentioned in the chapter, it's called The Ant. If you go to the chapter of The Ant, chapter 27, I mean, the Quran is like a zoo, man. Literally a zoo. And spiders, elephant, you name it. I mean, whatever, whatever you want. So in the chapter of the end, we find a verse, which is verse number 82. Let us go. It says, and this is the Muslim translation. Remember, this might not my translation. Please forgive me, please. If you don't like the translation, please don't kill me, please. Please don't kill me. Please don't go. Don't go. And when the word is fulfilled concerning them, we shall bring forth a beast. Uh, 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 okay. <coughs> like cartoon day. Of the earth, and he speak to them. The earth, he will speak to us. Okay, I'm Chinese. King Ho, he ho. A beast, he speaks Chinese. How wonderful. He must be made in China. And then this beast, he is going to recite Quran for them. Because those people, they don't believe in Allah. So Allah now, he will send you a beast. He will say, Bismillah, illah, man, illahim. Unbelievable. Now, if we go and try to understand this chapter, let us go and examine the biggest scammer in history, Ibn Kathir. Chapter 27, verse number 82. I mean, this thing, I click in it, it doesn't give me a chance to... Okay, here we go. All right. Read with me carefully, please. Do you see it, my friend? <clears throat> The beast will come and he will have in his hand the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. But let me first read for you the description of this beast in case you want to imagine how he looked like, just to help you. Ibn Zubayr described the beast and said, and by the way, this is something you can find Muhammad is taking from the Bible. I will let you think about where, where, where. Think about it and you let me know. Its head like the head of a bull. Its eyes are like the eyes of a pig. Its ears like the ears of an elephant. Its horn like the horn of a stag. Its neck like the neck of an ostrich. Its chest like the chest of a lion. Its color like the color of a tiger. Its hatches, hunches are the, like the hunches of a cat. Its tail like the tail of a ram. Its legs like the legs of a camel. Between each pair of his joints is the distance of a 12 cubit. It will bring with it the staff of Moses and the ring of Suleiman. By the way, I have good news for you. This beast will not bring anything because I got those things from eBay. 
I bought them already. So now this beast is looking for them. He do not know that they are stolen from him, and I bought a stolen property. Report to me, please. Please report me. Please don't go. Don't go. Please don't go. So now this beast, he is coming, and he have the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. Look at this, man. He have all the power control, the black magic in the earth. The ring of Solomon. Did you watch the, the movie that called The Lord of the Ring? That is the ring. And then there will be no believer left without making a white spot on his face, which will spread until all his face is shining white as a result. Do you remember the Abdul? He says to us, This is about coming, which means metaphorical coming from darkness to light. He said that, right? It turned to be that Abdullah is a liar. Are you there, Abdullah? Abdullah, who are you that lie? You say this is metaphorical. Why are you that lie? So in the judgment day, the beast will come to me and he will hit me with the rung of cinema in my nose. Boof. And Christian Prince, he will have a big nose like, oh, man. Am I, ble am I bleeding? You, you hit me in my nose? Hey, you beast, you hit me in my nose. Do you know who I am? Mm, I know. Do you know who I am? Yes. Uh, what's my name? Mm, Allah knows best. The beast will hit me in my nose. I mean, why the nose? But to be honest with you, I'm glad he did not hit me in my balls. That would be more painful. I mean, I'm so, so, so happy he chose the nose, not the balls. I mean, imagine he hit you there. Like, hello. And then after he hit your nose, a white spot will be in your nose. It's like a pimple. Very cute. You look like a bear. And then the white spot increase, 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 and you became all your body shining white. Actually, I can work as a flush a flush light for people if you have a if you have a need, like you lose electricity if you live in the Middle East or something. And then he will do the same to the disbeliever. And there will be no disbeliever left without making a black spot on his face which will spread until his face is a black as a result Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. and then guys we go in the market everybody in the market is either white or black there's no asian look like muhammad he never heard of something called asian so we go in the market then when we when the people trade with one another in the market they will say oh the believer oh this believer how they knew from the color all the disbelievers they are black and all the believers are white and yet they say to you that islam is not racist Islam is not racist. If this is not racist, what is racism? Why all people will be black and white? What about Allah? He make us red. I like to be red sometime. Green. I used to boat like this guy, Mr. Green. Uh, you know, when I start learning English, the names in English, they make no sense. Man. Mr. Brown. I look at Mr. Brown, he's white. And then Mr. Black. Mr. Black is white. And then there's a guy, his name is Mr. White, but he's black. I was really confused. I felt like I'm reading Quran, brother. Do we have any Abdul? Hello? You cannot wait to call. All this time you are waiting to call. Why you don't call?
Hello? So my friends, as you see, Islam is nothing but a collection of stupidity. How many of you agree that Islam is stupid? Give me one. If you think Islam is smart, give me two. If you think Islam is stupid, give me one. If you think Islam, sorry, if you think Islam, it's my fault. I said my fault, sorry. Okay, okay, that's it. The decision is made. <laughs> so as you see, I mean, this is stupid. Muslim, Muslim, put some two. I mean, come on. I mean, that will not be nice for Islam. Put some two Muslims. Obviously, Islam is very smart. Okay, you know what? I will put two just to support Islam, brother. I mean, that's embarrassing. Not even one, two. Here we go. I will put two. Islam is very smart, brother. Allah is the first God who discovered the whitening machine and the blacking machine. And look how easy the plastic surgery. He hit you by a ring. Any Abdul? Guys, do you be honest? Do you enjoy the program of the guy he call you call him a Christian prince? Are you are you enjoying his program? You see, what we do here is very important. It is a lot of information. And as you see, we show reference. I am not interested in showing you my ugly face. Here is a real school. Same time, we have fun, we enjoy it, and we learn. And there is no way Abdul will come to you tomorrow and you cannot get him busted. If you watch my videos only for maybe 10 days or 20 days, you became as if you are a scholar. And this is why we say, please download our videos. For those videos, don't be selfish. Okay, you show, you saw it, you watch it, you've been here. What about you be part of it? Download the videos, share them in your channels, save them in your hard drive. So always, if they take them down, we pause them again and let the whole world see the stupidity of this God. And my friend, when you save the life of somebody by posting a video, you get the blessing of the Lord. Do you remember the story of the three servants? This is what will happen to us. The Lord will ask me and will ask you, what you did? Okay, you've been there for how long? What do you did? You will say to him, I bought a house. You will say to him, I have two cars. That would not count. How many people you help to bring them out of the darkness? That will count. Your money will not. Your house will not, your bank account will not, and you will take nothing with you to the grave. So get the blessing of saving somebody's life, changing the life of somebody, spreading the truth, and the truth will set you free, as the Lord He said. So it's very important for us that we not to be selfish. As you see, for me, I do not need to be convinced Islam is false. I'm sick of it. To be honest with you, I'm sick of it. But I do it because I need to be sure that time will come and when I go, somebody, he earned a lot of knowledge and he can replace me. The Bible says, my people, they've been destroyed of because of their ignorance. Ignorance destroyed my people. And ignorance is our problem. If we can fight ignorance, we are safe and secure. People die because of cancer or because of ignorance. The fact it's ignorance. We do not know how to fight it. People die because of a flu for centuries. And then the second they found a little tiny medicine and we are saved from the flu. Ignorance, my friend. Ignorance bring death. And in this case, Ignorance more than death. It's hell 
or heaven so let us work together and do what is needed to be done with this I want to say thank you for everybody and thank you for those who made donation we appreciate your help and support and we and I hope in a few hours from now we will see many of you download this video and share it everywhere in YouTube thank you very much for being here Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again take care bye-bye